What's happening? We're Brooklyn now. Yeah, Brooklyn in the house. Brooklyn always in the house. I did some shows in Australia. I said, we're Brooklyn now. They went, ah! Oh. I said, how y'all got here? I said, we took the train. You get the train at home, you skim a horn. You don't go straight to Australia, y'all. Ah! Born and raised here. Grew up right down the block. Yo, man. Grew up right down the block in the 80s. Growing up in the 80s was crazy. I was a crack dealer. But I felt sorry for the crackheads. I would sell them crack and then feel sorry for them because I was a crack dealer with a heart of gold. I just couldn't take it no more. I got frustrated with doing that stuff. I had to stop because I got tired of you know, them bringing me $3 and 200 pennies. <laughs> I'm not counting all them pennies because you won't get high. <laughs> not today. Where the fuck you get 200 pennies from anyway? <laughs> My arm was a crackhead, man. You get what I tell you? My arm was a crackhead. I remember one Christmas, she bought me a Game Boy. I was like 12 years old. She bought me a Game Boy. And then she stole it. <laughs> then she helped me look for it. <laughs> Yo, man, I was so heated. I was like, why you stole my Game Boy? And then help me look for it. She said, I had to eliminate myself as a suspect. <laughs> Oh, man, things are getting dark out here, y'all. Y'all better look at the world. The world is a ghetto. White people know how we feel. Now y'all want to occupy Wall Street. Black people occupy all streets. Know these things, man. It's scary when white people can't even save themselves now. I'm telling you, I'm a doomsday prepper. I went to Costco's, I got like 8,000 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> Getting dark, I see the incoming. White people, you have, white dude, you have a spam? No, you better get used to it. <laughs> to save that spam key, that spam key is universal. <laughs> doomsday come, you up Shit's Creek without a spam key. <laughs> get your shit together. We ready. I know I am. I ain't going to the mountains when doomsday come. I'm going to the top of the projects. <laughs> Y'all sleep, them parachutes start coming out the sky. I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be right on the 14th floor. <laughs> Things are getting dark, Paula Dean. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Y'all way too hard on an old girl, man. She's a 65-year-old white woman from the South. I wouldn't trust her ass if she didn't say nigga. <laughs> Yo, she was 18 years old when the Civil Rights Act was passed. That's 18 years of saying nigga for free. <laughs> White people, you just don't wake up one morning and be like, I'm nigga free now. <laughs> no, you got to wing yourself off of that word. <laughs> Start with like 10 niggas a day, they work your way down, get a nigga free patch, all of that. Substitute the word darky sometimes. <laughs> I'm serious, the way she cooks, she could call me nigga any day. <laughs> Look here, nigga. I got some cornbread, ham, hocks, and collard greens for your ass, nigga. I'll be like, thank you, baby. <laughs> thank you, baby. <laughs> Come on, man. There's not a chef in the world that got that order for 175 chicken wings and didn't say, this is for niggas. <laughs> if I get an order for 175 chicken wings, I'm be like, yeah, this is for niggas. Man. <laughs> they do not eat killed breast. <laughs> Let's look at this chicken wing shit. White people stealing from us. Kentucky Fried Chicken, the secret recipe. And everybody know the colonel stole that recipe from a black slave named Jubilat. Now, I give y'all credit for coleslaw, but that's about it. <laughs> you take it too far, my man. No white man know how to fry no damn chicken. It's 
stole that recipe, man. The Colonel. <laughs> My fiance is half white and half black. And she, we was going to visit her grandmother down south. She's a hundred year old white woman with dementia. And my lady was nervous. I was like, baby, what's wrong? Are you worried? Are you scared your grandmother gonna call me a nigga? Cause her grandmother had called somebody a nigga the day before. <laughs> and she was like, yes, baby, I'm worried. Cause I'm, I hope she don't unleash a whole bundle of nigga on you. And then that's when I realized it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Cause her grandmother was very nice to me. She said, that's a nice nigga boy you're marrying. <laughs> But I thought I was into Killer Mockingbird. Huh? <laughs> she gonna ask me to bust up a shit for my next? <laughs> I'm serious, man. I was watching TV, right? And they had this debate on which word is worse, nigga or cracker. And I look at it like this. Listen, if 20 crackers is chasing one nigga, that word is bad. <laughs> but if 20 niggas is chasing one cracker, it's worse. Cause them 20 niggas gonna catch that one cracker. There's a rap for his ass. He done use that word in the wrong place. You don't do that. Oprah says she's not gonna be hanging around nobody that used the N word, knowing she used that shit on Stepman's ass every day. <laughs> nigga, if you don't take your stick ass feet off my damn coffee table, it's gonna be me and you here, nigga. You need to get a damn job. Well, Gail King got one. FedEx ain't hiring, UPS ain't hiring, nigga. <laughs> Tired of you said, man. <laughs> Things are getting dark, man. Then you got to stand your ground law. Knowing black people ain't never had no ground to stand on. But black people, we protesting because Stevie Wonder, Beyonce and Jay-Z said they're not gonna perform in no states that got stand your ground law. MC Hammer said he not gonna perform in no state that got stand your ground law. And they said they didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Julio said he'd do the whole tour for $225. <laughs> Man, black people can be racist too. Black people can be racist. Some black women just, the only thing they want to do in, in the world is go up to a public school and curse a white female teacher out. <laughs> no matter what her child done did. This little boy done stabbed another little boy in the head with a number two pencil. She just want to curse the T-shirt. She go up to I know he stabbed that little boy in the head with a number two pencil. I know he did that, because his father's in jail for stabbing somebody in the head with a number two pencil. OK? OK? Well, what the fuck was y'all doing? And she just got her nails done. What the fuck was y'all doing? What the fuck is this? OK? Well, all this stabbing's going on. Because I know he stabbed that boy in the head with a number two fucking pencil, OK? Like I said, his father's in jail for stabbing somebody in the head with a number two fucking pencil. What the fuck was y'all doing? <laughs> I swear for fucking God. Call me up to this fucking school. I'm gonna fuck you up, Miss Lopez. Watch, three o'clock. <laughs> three fucking o'clock, watch. Me and you, nigga. <laughs> I'm serious, women fight. Y'all throw down, women are fierce. They do not run. You ever saw a female run from a fight? No, they throw down, it's right then and there. It goes down. Women, no matter white, black, Latin, no matter what. Dudes, we will run. We will talk our way out of it if we could. Women, you call her bit, bitch, it's on. <laughs> and the winner is the one who titty pop out first. <laughs> I don't care if she lost the fight, she's a winner to me. <laughs> you ever see women fighting, grabbing each other hand, that titty just be right there. Let my hair go first. Let my hair go first. That's why, guys, we stand around and watch the fight. We never break it up. That possibility, that titty pop out. Especially if she cute like this one, she cute. You get to see that titty. Guys go crazy when that titty pop out. Soon as it pop out, burn. Oh, 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 yo, 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 come. A titty came out, okay? Her nipple was this big, baby, what up? It looked like a tater tot. Two lunches in the fight. <laughs> Dudes, we ain't like that. Dudes, punks. We could talk our way out if we will, because you don't know if the other dude got skills. 
You don't want to get dropped. <laughs> Even if you win, he get a lucky punch in. Now you go home making love to your wife with your eye closed, you know? <laughs> your lip on bussy. Women don't like to have sex with injured men. You ever made love to a dude with a cast on his arm? Can't even do doggy style because he can't reach a butt cheek. You know? Men, and you know if you're going to lose the fight, too. All on the way, how he take his shirt off. If homeboy take his shirt off from the bottom, like this, it might be a tie. Might be. You is a definite loss, but it might be. But if he take his shirt off from the top like this, oh, you about to get fucked up. You about to get fucked up. First thing you're gonna see is his abs. And you know he was locked up. He taking his shirt off from the top. What, what, what? I wasn't even talking to you, man. I didn't say nothing to you. I didn't even say nothing. I didn't even say nothing. I didn't even say nothing. I ain't even say nothing. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I ain't even say nothing. You 42 years old, I ain't even say nothing. You ever see like a fat dude and a skinny dude fight? And ironically, the fat dude is winning, but the fight got to be over in five minutes because he's running out of time because he's carrying all that girth. And they sure, you know, guys, we start tussling and wrestling and our shirts come off. And like when a, when a skinny dude's shirt come off, you see abs. But when a fat dude's shirt come off in a fight, you see glimpses of gut, like uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. And a fat dude got the skinny dude on the floor and he bent over, you can see his behind crack. You ever see like two old dudes fight? And after the fight, they be change on the floor, you know? <laughs> Somebody Vicks nasal inhalers over there. A Johnny Mathis tape right here. A pink rabbit's foot over by a tire. They both got on old alligator shoes. And you can see the foot knuckle print on the side. And the heel is ran down. <laughs> it's getting dark. I'm telling y'all, y'all better take heave. The Pope quit. <laughs> you can't quit if you're the Pope. <laughs> when you're the Pope, you're supposed to die in that position. You don't quit, this ain't McDonald's. <laughs> I'm tired of this hat, God. <laughs> Getting dark, man. Got the South African runner, the sprinter, remember the Olympics with the two fake legs? Killed his girlfriend. That's crazy, ladies. What a way to go. What do you let a dude with two fake legs kill you? <laughs> I've been fighting for like three weeks, man. You've seen it coming. Just hide one of his legs, man. As soon as he start blinking fast, that means he coming to get you. you know? <laughs> I'ma hide one of his legs tomorrow. See, uh, he look like he want to be active with his hands. He ain't gonna get active and violent with me and domestic with me. <laughs> Fellas, don't be hitting no women. You're a punk if you put your hands on a woman. That's right. I don't believe in that. What you do is beat her brother's ass. Every time she get on your nerves, you go get a ski mask and an aluminum back and meet him in a parking lot at his job and wear him out. Put him in a wheelchair where both his feet go like this. And at the divorce proceedings, you walk by her, whisper in there, I did that to your brother. <laughs> Enjoy your judgment. He killed her, man. You don't do that. You know, he killed her. First of all, when I saw him running in the Olympics last year, I was just like you, I was shocked. I was like, what is, what? That's cheating. <laughs> that was cheating. He should be running with other people with fake legs. Cause real legs got, they got weight, they get tired. 
They get tired. They got weight. He never got tired because he was running on two pancake spatulas with hydraulics. <laughs> And after the race, he ran home and he killed his girlfriend because she was making pancakes with one of his feet. <laughs> you want some blueberries? I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> he ain't beating me. You got to live with that. 30 years later, one of your grandkids, Grandpa, was you in the Olympics? Yep. Did you win? Nope, but do with two fake legs beat me. <laughs> you ain't shit, Grandpa. You know what? Yeah. He wouldn't have beat me. We would have been racing. He would have been, gentlemen, take your mom. As soon as they said, get set, I'd have ran up on his ass with a screwdriver. <laughs> that first turn gonna be a doozy. You gonna have a garage sale out this one. Lug nuts, boats, and springs everywhere. It's getting dark, I'm telling you. You can't even go down on your woman without catching throat cancer. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Michael Douglas! <laughs> I know his wife was pissed off because they get a divorce now. And she told him, you better take that back. You better take it back. You ain't getting no throat cancer messing with this. <laughs> you probably swallowed a bad batch of dick earlier in your career. <laughs> this ain't no trick. This all tree here, baby. It's all true, baby. You don't say that, even if it's true. You just let us know who you going down on and put her face on the internet so we don't go down on her with a Ghostbusters cross across. Danger, <laughs> pussy bag. Because I like to go down on mines. I love going down on mines. I go on down on mines so much, I'd eat it till I burp. I go down on my woman. When I go down on my woman, I like to go all the way down. Sometimes I go across the street. <laughs> they got that new club over there called Club Brown Eye. I've seen a few of y'all in Club Brown Eye. You know if you've been in there. But JJ washed right off. Booyo don't go nowhere. That'd be there two, three days. You'd be at your job on the computer like this. <laughs> you call her up on your lunch break, baby. What? I smell you. <laughs> I smell you. I'm serious, man. If Eating for JJ causes throat cancer, dead man walking. <laughs> Don't be surprised, 10 years from now, y'all see me talking. <laughs> Doing PSAs and everything. I use these for JJ. Surgeon General says it's dangerous. Eating too much with JJ for the throat cancer. We shouldn't do it. Don't be like me. I used to go swimming. Now I just toss salad. It's safer. Doing commercials. America runs on Duncan. <laughs> Affleck, Affleck. <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. Doing crazy stuff, man. <laughs> Black Friday, it's getting dark out there. Black Friday. You can't even go shopping the day after Thanksgiving no more. You can lose your life in the Best Buy. I, what? If I get squashed to death in the Best Buy on Black Friday, I'll be in heaven, I'll be so pissed at God, I'll be like, Shit out of dead. <laughs> I gotta lose my life 
Could somebody decide to slash prices on a 27 inch Zenith? <laughs> Pissed. It's getting dark out here in this world. Steroids and these sports and athletes, I'm tired of it. Alex Rodriguez. Everybody using steroids. What happened to the good old days? Dow Strawberry, when baseball players just did cocaine. <laughs> what happened? Hell on. When athletes just did hell on. Black people say hell on. White people say heroin. <laughs> we say hell on because you try it once, you hook from hell on. <laughs> baseball players doing hell on. Remember? They be in the baddest box to get ready to hit. Me. Dark out here. <laughs> Congressman Weena, again? I'm convinced he just don't know how to work the phone. <laughs> Trying to email somebody and a picture of his penis goes to the New York Times. <laughs> I know, because it happened to me. <laughs> Last week, I text a picture of my penis to my Aunt Cynthia seven times. <laughs> and she sent me back a picture of her for boob. <laughs> now we got a relationship on Facebook. <laughs> I'm telling you, technology dumbing us down. Don't let it dumb you down. I know a lot of y'all are computer savvy. I don't know nothing about no computers. <laughs> I'm, I'm old school, I don't know nothing about technology. I got a 2013 car and the windows still go down like this. <laughs> Don't let it dumb you down. I think we rely on it way too much. Great invention, terrible experiment. Because you're not engaging with human beings. It's just too much. What is cyber? I just heard about cyberbullying. What is that? <laughs> I don't know nothing about no cyberbullying. When I was growing up down the block, you know, kids be mean to you in the schoolyard. You ain't got your big brother. He came back with you. Now you better win this fight. You turn into a little credible hope. Crying and everything with your knuckles up. <laughs> but first, y'all had to do this for like an hour. Got you last, 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 got you last. And you want to fight. Growing up in the hood, I couldn't do that. My oldest brother was crippled. I go get my oldest brother here, he come. <laughs> By the time he got there, the fight was over. <laughs> Did you win? <laughs> no, the fight is over. Where was you? I was coming. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Don't feel bad for my brother. He was crippled, but wasn't nothing else wrong with him. Because he had 11 kids. <laughs> and he was strong up top. Don't be the one that he get his clutches on. Cause he'll grab you up and throw you in a cobra clutch, put you right to sleep, eh? <laughs> well, you known in the projects is the dude that let a crippled dude put you to sleep. 
Everywhere you go, people in Brooklyn know you. Ah, you that dude that got put to sleep by a crippled dude. <laughs> you be in Macy's buying a shirt, they ring you up. That'll be $14. You got put to sleep by a crippled dude, right? <laughs> no, we don't take credit cards. You don't want to Harvard, got a degree, come back to the projects. Everybody, nobody forgot. Hey, George, what's up, man? I'm so proud of you. I heard you got your doctorates and everything in Harvard. That is incredible. Remember you got put to sleep by a crippled dude? <laughs> Nobody forget. You gotta move down south once you get put to sleep by a crippled dude. <laughs> Even girls, you be in a club. Hey, what's up? How you doing? My name is George. Hey, baby, can I buy you a drink? Yeah. What you drinking? I'll take an incredible home. Huh? You could double up on it. Wow, you are pretty. You come to this club all the time? Yeah, sometime I come. My brother said you got put to sleep by a crippled dude. <laughs> People don't forget that. I'm never gonna be comfortable. Never, I had to create my own lane. You know what I'm saying? I can't go back to where I grew up at because they'll rob the shit out of me. We love you, Trey, you funny and all that, but I need that chain, I do. <laughs> and a bracelet, come on. I can't hang out where I live at now because dudes like me just don't be living there. All my life I grew up watching these TV shows where the, the welcoming committee, the neighbors, they come, your first day living there, they knock on the door and they greet you and they welcome you to the neighborhood. That happened to me. But my name is Tracy Morgan, so they didn't know what they was getting. They thought they was getting an Irish female. Tracy Morgan, man. <laughs> Little white lady rang my bell. I was like, I looked at my people, I was like, wow, an old white lady with some donuts and stuff. And I came to the door with my black do-rag on, you know, AKA scared whitey hat. <laughs> and she looked at me, she said, ah! I don't know where she got the horse in the landing from, but she turned into Paul Revere. <laughs> she said, the niggas are coming, the niggas are coming. The niggas are coming! Fuck the British! I tore them pastries up. I ain't gonna let racism get in the way of no good donuts, you know? <laughs> Life is different. It's different in the suburbs. I realize that, because I live in the suburbs now. It's different. Like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving different in the suburbs. The white people be having nice Thanksgivings and an end on time and everything. I'll come up in the hood. Our Thanksgivings didn't start until like one o'clock. They had to give out flyers. Females free before 12, you know? There was dudes outside our apartment talking about, yo, is bitches in there? <laughs> Thanksgiving in my house didn't start until somebody opened up that Smirnoff. It's going down right then and there. I always had that aunt that was a Jehovah Witness. No, she ain't supposed to be celebrating no damn holidays. But she showed up anyway with her crazy family because somebody cooked. <laughs> and she the first one. Nobody paying her attention because she just Jehovah Witness shit all her life. And then as soon as she get drunk, she the first one to pull that titty out. <laughs> she dancing, doing an electric slide with it out. You cannot see it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> First one gets drunk and want to tell the truth, and we all love it. Hope she bring up Cousin Lonnie. We all know he got a little something, something extra on the side. She be the first one to tell the truth. Bobby is not that boy's father. <laughs> and the boy sitting right there, he 44 years old. <laughs> Bobby's not that damn boy's father. Y'all know it. Bobby's a good man. He ain't that damn boy's father. He right there crying. I hate y'all. Y'all ain't no family. <laughs> Every Thanksgiving, y'all gotta bring my father into it. I can't wait to go back down south, man. <laughs> then her husband, Uncle Rick, he crazy. I went to their house one time and I knocked on the door, right? He was on the other side. He knocked back. <laughs> I said, Rick, you in there? He said, Rick, you in there? He said, Rick, you crazy, man. He said, Rick, you crazy, man. 
I ain't like spending the night at her house. I was like eight years old. And we get ready to go to bed at night and she want to threaten us with Armageddon. I can have nightmares about Satan. I remember she used to take us on them Bibles, you know, they give out the books like 6 o'clock in the morning, and nobody like Jehovah's Witnesses is knocking on their door. But that's the only time your moms let you curse. <laughs> Mommy, the Jehovah's Witnesses is at the door. Well, curse at them and tell them to go away. We don't want them damn books. <laughs> and you'd be at the door like this in the peephole. You better get the fuck away from my door. I'm going you. Fuck, I spit it down. I'm fucking murder you. Fuck, I'm Get your ass, motherfucking make pussy ass, motherfucker. I'm gonna murder you, pussy ass, motherfucker. Bitch, I'm gonna take that fucking stick in your ass, motherfucker. Bitch, I'm gonna murder you, motherfucker. Bitch, I'm gonna murder you, motherfucker. Bitch, I'm gonna murder you, motherfucker. Did they leave? No, mommy, they still there. But do it again. I'm gonna kill you, motherfucking bitch ass, motherfucker. Bitch, I'm gonna motherfucker. Then I had my uncle Bud. That was my grandmother's baby. She called him her baby. Up until I made it, he was the superstar of the family because he went to Vietnam when he was 17 and he lost his leg in Vietnam. But my grandmother don't use the word lost his leg. She say, blown off. <laughs> she don't know how to pronounce blown. She says, it was blown off. <laughs> and nobody in the family like him. Nobody like him. He like 63 years old now and lost three wives, got a $50 a day coke habit, and he's mean. And he come over to the house for Thanksgiving. We don't even go down there and help him out. He got to put his wheelchair out by himself. <laughs> out the car, he got to put his wheelchair up and get in there by himself. And we be just looking at him in the window. <laughs> Can't stand him. Who invited him? You invited him? Kathy, you invited him. Ain't nobody invite him. Ain't nobody invite him. All of us say this to the window. Ain't nobody invite him. Who would invite him? Joseph, did you invite him? Ain't nobody invite him. And he come upstairs. He want to terrorize the kids with his missing leg. Come here, little nigga. I'll put this leg on you. Come here. I'll put this leg on you. And the kids get scared. And one of them has said something about him. They said, your wheelchair pillow stink. <laughs> and he just sat there and started crying. <laughs> And we thought, cause we thought he was bad, cause he got his wheelchair clubs on, the ones that's cut off at the fingers. So we always thought he thought he was bad. Then he attacked my aunt, cause she's 28 with eight kids, and she'd have kept her legs closed. She wouldn't have all them damn kids. And she go off. Why are you always talking about my kids? This is my kid. They got to say nothing about my kid, cause he always talking about my kid. This is mine. I ain't like you. <laughs> Cause he always talking about my kids. Don't be talking about my kids. That's why your wheelchair pillow stay. <laughs> Watch when all these fathers come home from jail, they gonna fuck you up. <laughs> oh, he talking about somebody. Then my grandmother, she was, like when he lost his leg, she was traumatized. So she still think he's that 17 year old boy, her baby. And she come out the room with this obvious wig on, a nightgown filled with grease stains. And she come out there, she turned to Mahalia Jackson behind him. Who in here yelling at this baby? His leg was brutal. <laughs> in Vietnam. And every time she said Vietnam, her wig be crooked. <laughs> this baby's leg was brutal. <laughs> in Vietnam. <laughs> hey, Grandma, your wig is crooked again. Got him, come here. See, this baby, I don't care if his wheelchair pillow stink. His leg was blue, though. In the end God damn it, Grandma, just take the wig off. It's right here, it's fine. Don't worry about it, it's fine. It's fine. Getting dark. It's getting dark. But well, you have Miley Cyrus twerking like that. <laughs> I don't judge. Justin Bieber, Lindsay Lohan, that's decadence and debauchery. Do you know what decadence and debauchery is? Let me hear y'all say decadence and debauchery. No, say it like me. Decadence and debauchery. Welcome to the school of Tracy Morgan. to me. 
I've met decadence and debauchery. When I got to Hollywood, they picked me up at the airport. Hi, I'm decadence and I'm the debauchery. They took me to a party at Prince House two days later. And it got weird after that. Because Prince is a freak. And, but I'm a weedy beedy bing bong freak. And it went down that night. Prince had a, a band, a full band in his living room and jamming and everything. And then they started playing Purple Rain and I took the bass guitar from the man. I don't even know how to play bass. It was Purple Rain, Purple Rain. And I was like, rrr, rrr. <laughs> That'll change the song. Purple Rain. Anybody want to raise a hand? Rrr, rrr. <laughs> bang. We partied hardy that night. You know Tracy Morgan, when I take my shirt off and the party just started. It's going down. And I woke up the next morning on his couch. And he was standing at the door, the front door with his wife with purple pajamas on. And he said, Tracy Morgan, get the fuck out. But what happened to the party? No, the party was over last week. I didn't even know you was in here. I'm going out the front door, and as I got past him in the front door, I grabbed him by the back of his head, and I pulled his face close to me, and I said, my father loved when dubs cry. <laughs> I was gay for like three seconds. <laughs> I was just close to his face. My tongue came out a little bit. I was... Me, decadence and debauchery, we ride in the highway that night, going to my crib, the police pull us over. I said to the cop, are you stopping me? Because I'm the only black person in this car. He said, no, I'm stopping you because you got some cocaine right here on your nose. <laughs> we get to my crib. I got to go poop now. <laughs> I got to go boo-boo now. Gotta go number two, but ain't no toilet paper in the bathroom. Decadence said, shit in the kitty litter. <laughs> so I did! <laughs> and the stench came up and floated to the back of the house where my ex-wife was sleeping, like Scooby-Doo, miss. <laughs> Hit her in the nose and all the nose hair sizzled out. And she jumped up and said, what the what? And she ran to the bathroom and she seen a pile of human doodle right there. And she said, who shit it in the kitty litter? And Debauchery said, Lion see the cat did it. So I said, Snowball did it. She said, Snowball must have been a fucking mountain lion. I want a divorce, nigga. That's why I let decadence and Debauchery go. Because was, I was heading for jail. And I ain't built for jail. Jail, if I ever went to prison, that'd probably be cool for like two weeks because of Saturday Night Live and 30 Rock and stuff. Damn, Tracy Morgan, man, you made me forget about my time for a little while. And I'm in my cell. After two weeks, I'm putting up pictures of my son. And some big bolo dude is standing in my jail cell door, playing with himself, humping air. My man. They done forgot my name, my man. <laughs> what you doing in there? <laughs> I'm just hanging up pictures of my son. He's awesome. Wow, I see that. He looked just like you, my man. Same lips and everything. Thank you, man. Wow, he played baseball, huh? 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 Oh. Yeah, man, he's awesome. First baseman. Oh, I hear that. He's gonna be the next Ken Griffey. <laughs> Dig this here. You ever had sex with a man before? <laughs> Two weeks later, I'm sitting on the end of some weight bench in a prison yard, putting box braids in another dude's head.
Kevin, if you want your hair, Brad, you better stop playing handball. <laughs> Ladies, can I say something? All due respect, if you didn't lose weight before June 24th, you're gonna be fat all summer! <laughs> Y'all know the deadline. Y'all know the cutoff date. I'm trying to carry that yoga mat around like you lost. Like, come on, man. There ain't no fashion statement. No, I didn't get my slim fast meals yet. They just sent me the shakes. What you want me to do? I love, don't get me wrong, I love chunky chicks, man. I love chunky chicks, because no matter where you touch them, they feel like titty. <laughs> Ooh wee! Love me some big girls. You can't go wrong with a girl big and strong. Heating the winter shade in the summer. I ain't talking about no muffin top, I'm talking about a busted can of biscuits. <laughs> I'm trying to stick this ding-dong in the Michelin man. <laughs> so big, you got to lift the gut up to find a JJ. <laughs> Turn his flashlight. I did. I don't discriminate. I just don't want to get fat, because it's hard when you got all that girth. It's hard for people to understand. You ever try to, like, understand a person who, like, fat, when they sit down and say things at the same time, it's hard to understand them. They be like, eh, this is going to make me quiet. <laughs> when they sit down, they got to open their legs, because all that her girth. They got to lean on one side like this. Got to let that girth hang down. I got an uncle like that. He's a bouncer. He sit at the strip club all night like this. <laughs> There's a strip club called the Glass Slipper in Brooklyn, you know? And all the dudes, they take advantage of them because they can't understand them. They breaking the rules and he got to get them up out of there. And he's like, hey, my man. My man, don't touch the girls. Yeah, you can tip them, but don't touch the girls. Homeboy, home, don't touch. I got to get these motherfuckers out of here. <laughs> I don't touch the girls, my man. <laughs> and he sound the same way when he sit down. <laughs> Homie Bastromi. Gangsta Boogie. Homeboy. Muddy Grip, don't touch the... Hey, Kim, they got more food upstairs? <laughs> don't touch the girls, my... I eat these motherfuckers. I had a baby, y'all. I'm a daddy. It's good to see older dudes still boning, right? It's good to see older dudes still boning. My lady knew when she laid down with me. Nine times out of 10, you gonna get pregnant because I don't be pulling out. I'm old school. I don't believe in condoms, you know? If you ain't willing to die for it, you really didn't want it. Motherfucker, see this motherfucker behind me. Right? Ooh, ooh. Does this happen? Join the middle of a fucking taping? And this nigga just ran up. And I was like, yo, I'm saying this joke, but I know somebody touching on me. Is it Prince or Paula Dean? I got a baby now, she's beautiful. I just don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair when old people have babies. I don't think that's fair, like 45, it should be a cutoff date, you know, it's healthy. That's right there, it's pushing the limit. But when you're 60 and 50, you shouldn't be, I don't think so, because it, it's not fair to the child. First of all, you ain't gonna be able to keep up with them. You're 50 years old, 60 years old, you can't play with them. You're gonna be tired. The baby gonna grow up having your ailments. Baby in pre-K can't play with his crayons or finger paint because his arthritis is killing him. <laughs> Nap that time, he got to take a leave. <laughs> that arthritis.
arthritis killing that baby? <laughs> arthritis on baby hands. <laughs> you ever see arthritis on baby hands? Hands ain't even developed, but they like this, you know? <laughs> I'm from the hood. So if I've been a little promiscuous tonight, forgive me, y'all. But that's where I'm from. We don't got no money there. All we got is each other. So to make me feel good, because I can't get a job out there, my lady give me sex <laughs> to make me feel like a man again. And she got to give it to me every day, all day. Because sometimes I'm feeling down, mama. <laughs> and that love, it make me feel like Superman. When your woman give you some good head, you feel like you go out there and conquer the world. <laughs> we ain't got no money. You know, we use sex as a sedative in the hood. It eases the pain of poverty. You broke, I'm broke, let's go half on a baby. <laughs> that little poodle look cute, but we can't get no stamps for that. We need to hurry up and get the wig check out the mail. <laughs> and I'm all into old school love. And it, you know, young people today, they don't know how to love, really. Cause they don't see it on TV no more. Everything is geared towards young people. Nothing against young people, but when you young, to know how to love for real and real, really do it, they got to show older, mature love on TV. They not showing that. They showing young people get breaking up and then hurting themselves. And it's their first relationship ever. No, old school love is when you hang on in there. Hang on in there, baby. <laughs> no matter what, you don't bail out, you go through it. Couples need to be left alone. I'm into old school love. Even in that fight, even in that fight, she still love your ass. Even in that horrible fight, fuck you. Fuck you, you ain't shit. Fuck you, I wish I could get all my JJ back. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, you hungry? <laughs> you want something to eat? You hungry? <laughs> yeah, you more lasagna your name? That's old school love. That's old school love. Old school love is when she give you chlamydia twice and you go back. <laughs> you love her ass. You ain't gonna sit in that clinic for anybody. <laughs> you see the size of these pills? I'll take these for you. For us. <laughs> 40 years later, you're gonna laugh about it with your woman. Remember the time you gave me crabs? Huh? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> and women cook. Cook. I know there's microwaves out there and all of that. But you young cook. When I was in high school, you wasn't graduating. I don't care if you was captain of the football team, you was not getting out of high school unless you passed home economics. You better know how to bake that cake. You ain't going nowhere. I don't care how much you bench press. <laughs> they don't teach home economics in school no more because everybody trying to be a CEO. Ladies, cook. The way to your man's heart, guarantee you, through his stomach. <laughs> you a female in here and you don't know how to cook, it don't make sense. Cause there's 150,000 cooking channels on TV. <laughs> Sit your dumb ass down and watch one. <laughs> you a veteran if you know how to give head and hook up a steak. In that order. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. He might hang out all night, but after a while he gonna be like this with his own boys. Yo, I gotta get out of here, y'all. It's Meatloaf Wednesdays, kid. <laughs> she put green peppers in it tonight. She doubled up on him. <laughs> I had a girlfriend that was a CEO, and I dumped her, cause she couldn't cook. She could run her own company, but she couldn't cook. One day, she messed up the cream of wheat. I said, how you do that? The back of the box, they just had water. And why is it green? And your chicken tastes like wood. Yeah, I couldn't take it, man. I mean, she, she had more money than me. This is before I was on TV and everything. She had way more money than me, right? We went to dinner, and she thought she was impressing me by picking up the bill. Like, I cared about that. I ain't care about that, but she was sitting there wondering why I'm watching the waitress. I'm watching the waitress because she's bringing me my food. <laughs> That's sexy to me. Your woman got, your, got her thongs on, and she bringing you your plate, you know? Here, this is lasagna. And you clean it off and then lick the plate and be like, baby, there's more on there. And you come back, you know you feel good because you like this, yeah, I got it. And your mind, you going, my man ain't going no fucking where. 
That's instant gratification for a woman. I'm telling all y'all young girls that, learn how to cook. If you love that man, you want to keep him, cook. That's how Paula Dean got me. <laughs> the chicken wing. Believe that. And fellas, vice versa, man. If your woman only wear pearls, you go get them pearls, man. I don't care what you got to do. Throw a brick at a jewelry store window. <laughs> you gonna do 25 years in the clink, but she got her pearls. <laughs> Each one teach one. Some of us been taught wrong. <laughs> I see a lot of couples in here. Keep your sex life alive. Don't let it die. I don't care what you got to do. Get freaky with it, you. Go get one of them black leather masks with the zipper in the back. <laughs> you. Make sure she get the big pink gag ball. <laughs> Be creative. Let her hit you in the booty cheeks with 2,000 grapes at night. <laughs> Straighten the booty cheeks. You squash bananas on her tits. Get freaky with it. Role play. Role play. My lady's half white, half black. We role play. Last week, I bought her a Girl Scout outfit. Then I told her, go outside and knock on the door and try to sell me some cookies. <laughs> she had the braids and everything. She's like, Miss Cindy, you want to buy some butter crunch? And I came to the door with my thing hanging out the side. I was like, yeah, come on in here. <laughs> Little girl, come on in here. Anybody a couple of boxes from you? Anybody a couple of boxes from you? And then we bone like crazy. And then we sat on the couch and ate the cookies with some milk. <laughs> you know how good Oreos taste after sex? With some ice cubes in the milk? Good. Cause she's half white, half black, so next week we are gonna play slavery. She's the master's daughter and I'm a big black buck out the cotton field. And she's demanding. Jubilee, you better come on up here and give me some of that big black thing down. Come here, oh, Miss Ann, please don't make me do it again. Oh, please. I just can't take it no more. Sticking this big black thing down in that sweet pussy. Please don't make me do it again. I can't take it no more. I just not the jangle. You better give me that big black snack, do it out now. Don't sass me, nigga, I'll whip you clean. <laughs> oh, Miss Ann, please. Please. Last time you rolled this ding dong till it was red. <laughs> Put it in my mouth now, nigga. As soon as you put it in her mouth, I'm gonna be singing an old slave song. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Lord, Lord, uh oh. <laughs> Keep the lines of communication open, y'all. Stop over with that email and texting and all that other stuff. Talk to each other, because there's a lost art now. Everybody's texting, everybody emailing, because nobody want to engage. You don't have to talk to people, you have to deal with them. But we can't live in a world like that. We gotta talk. I need to know how you feeling, mama. Talk to me. Get on the phone. I know you computer savvy and you got the most high tech technology phone and all that. I don't care about that. You don't wanna talk to me on the phone? You hurting me. That's why we gotta talk. I don't like all of that text in the email because you lose 95%. You lose, you don't gain, you lose. That's why when I do business and I deal with people, I get them on the phone or I go see them. I didn't know your vibe, I could feel it. I could look at your body language and all of that. I know when I argue with my woman, I got to be face to face. Therefore, I know if I've crossed the line and I gotta go to Club Brown Eye to fix it, <laughs> or if it's cool. 
but I can't do that in an email or a text. You ever fight with your spouse in text? You know how stupid that look? Look, she mad at you, you mad at her, and she like this on the phone. You could get the fuck out tonight, you ugly motherfucker. I'm tired of you and those raggedy ass clippers in my fucking bathroom. All your nasty ass face hair in my sink. My kids use those fucking sinks. And when they fathers come home from jail, they gonna fuck you up. And your stink ass cousin be farting up my living room cause he's sleeping on my couch. He 36 years old and peed on it. So take him and get out of my house. You lazy, ugly motherfucker. <laughs> you get the text now, you looking at your phone like, suck my dick. <laughs> I ain't going no fucking where. <laughs> you ugly bitch. <laughs> Plus, that's not my cousin. <laughs> I just owe him money. I really don't know who the fuck he is. <laughs> Plus, that's not how you spell raggedy. <laughs> so you need to go back to school and get your high school equivalency <laughs> diploma. A.K.A. G.E.D. You dumb bitch. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <laughs> Thanks you, Morgan. I love you, motherfucker. for me. I love you. You hear me? I love you.